In yesterday, Bloomberg News wrote a story about the BMW of the future that will not only find a Starbucks for you, but it will order you a cup of coffee and pay for it by the time you get there. It could even suggest, you know, which one you want, even though you realize you don't want it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, the auto industry is, uh, I, I like to say, if you took Henry Ford in a time capsule and brought him to today, um, he'd look around, you'd tour the auto industry, he'd crack the hood of, you know, your typical car, visit a dealership, and he'd say, that's it. Nothing's That's, changed. Nothing's changed. We yeah. still only, you know, it's one of the leading causes of death in this country of young people. Uh, millions of accidents a year. We only use a car 4% of the time. Traffic. It's huge, huge, huge disruption hitting the auto industry. So, but, so in 100 years, nothing's changed. How long is it going to take, take before we see actual autonomous vehicles on the road? On the road that you could put your kids in in an in a actual city, no steering wheel, no pedals, we think three years. Three years. Yeah. What is that going to mean for the insurance industry? Um, so this will be a public transportation in a, in a large city in a public-private partnership. Slow-moving vehicles, they won't go more than 25 miles an hour. They'll be geographically limited to central San Francisco. Uh, will be by far the safest mode of transportation on, on, on land that you could, you could be on. Insurance industry loves the semi-autonomous technology, technologies for people that still have a steering wheel. Well, because uh, you got to pay for insurance, but you don't get in any accidents. Exactly. 90, 90 or 95 percent of accidents are caused by human error. So the insurance companies love that arbitrage of dramatically lower payouts, but still going to charge you a premium, even if they're giving you a better deal. When it comes to a full, what you're showing on your screen of these autonomous pods, that the insurance company will have to adapt to a B2B model, where they're insuring this per the company that makes that piece of plastic or the LiDAR camera, not the human being in the car. So what I'm wondering is, you, you're an auto analyst, but uh, we're looking at, a, it looks like a Google car, right? Yes. Um, becoming a tech analyst. Who's go exactly. Who's going to, to lead this? Is it going to be Ford and General Motors, BMW and Audi, or is it going to be Google and, and Apple. Facebook? Uh, we see the automobile right now is about 5 maybe 10% software and content, moving to 60% software and content, 40% uh, mechanical innovation, which we've been pushing to the nth degree for 100 years. So um, if you are an auto analyst, whether you know it or not, uh, you are, let's say, an emerging uh, mobility tech analyst. Uh, once upon a time, the auto industry was high tech. It was mechanical tech. Now we're applying Moore's Law. Uh, Uber-like shared economy models and autonomous technologies, it's coming. You're going to see more change in the next five years than we have in the last 50 or 60 years. Do you think Apple, with all the money they've got on hand, with all the possible opportunity uh, in this space, do you think they could actually acquire an automaker? We, uh, we've written on this uh, with Katie Huberty and Morgan Stanley, who's our Apple analyst on Apple's intentions to look at what is one of the largest total addressable markets in the world, 10 trillion miles traveled at a dollar a mile. That's 15% of global GDP. So Apple wants to perhaps maybe wants a piece of that in some way or another. It's uh, from Apple's perspective, if they want to, if they want to disrupt this industry, given their resources sure. and expertise, if they want they to, they can. can do anything. Mm -hmm. Do you believe they will? What's the possibility, probability? Our, our opinion is that it's too big of an adjustable market for them to ignore. What about Tesla? Oh, Tesla wait, has wait, wait, wait. Say that again. Yeah, well, it's, too, it's too big to I ignore. thought he was saying it's too big. They, they don't want to do it. It's, they, too, no, it's too, big too big to ignore. They can't just give it to their competitors to do. I, I think that there have been Apple executives who have been quoted. You can check your records on this. The, uh, the car is the ultimate mobile device. Right. It depends, obviously, how they're going to get in. Are they going to build their own car? Are they going to work with another car maker? Or are they just going to? I'm saying they have software? so much cash on hand. How about acquire one? Well, they, well, Apple, and we've written the a Apple generates more cash in uh, one quarter than the entire auto industry's R&D budget combined. Like Toyota, BMW, Daimler, everyone's uh, R&D budget combined in a four or five month period. So it's so they could buy one if they wanted to. What would they get for it? Though? Yeah. But, but why would they? Let me ask you about Tesla, because they have already disrupted the auto industry, at least at the higher end, at the luxury end. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about the future of Tesla? Will they go further? Will they actually come out with any product on time ever? And uh, will they be into autonomous vehicles as well? Well, Morgan Stanley recently hosted a Silicon Valley uh, tech tour with some investors a couple weeks ago. We, we visited, um, some, uh, we drove the autonomous car. We were driven by it, the Audi Q5 with Delphi. And, and met with NVIDIA and others. And uh, one of the takeaways is that Tesla has some very unique advantages. 100% of their cars are connected, collecting information 24 hours a day, can do over-the-air firmware updates. So their entire fleet, which maybe is now around 100,000 cars, soon will be a million or so, driving over a billion miles. Every single one of those miles is a 
potentially self-learning laboratory of mobility. What do you think the sharing economy mm -hmm. could do to the car industry with more and more people not buying cars, whether they're adopting, you know, the Uber lifestyle, zip cars. We are seeing, you know, less and less young people want to own stuff. That means homes, that means cars. So the, what are we going to The see sharing here? economy changes absolutely everything. It, that business model innovation and disruption is actually far greater than any one technology innovation or disruption because it addresses the number one flaw in the auto industry, utilization. Cars are used 52 minutes a day. Sitting there in parking point, lots. They're in your driveway to over 23 hours a day. 4% utilization. Think about it. It's, it's almost $20 trillion worth of invested capital on the, the world's cars, and we only use it 4% of a day. That is a problem. That is a problem that the shared economy model can significantly address. We've run simulations. We think 30, 40% utilization is doable. We have no more time, but do you have a view on Uber? Uh, I do not have a view on Uber. That is a Worth private asking. company on cover. I